Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 11. Um, this is part two of our three-parter on the three philosophies that Byron learned from his Grand Master at the monastery in, tai in Taiwan. And uh, this one is on speak good words. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Be Kind, Be Happy podcast. As always, let's begin with three deep breaths together to synchronize our minds. So eyes closed, back straight, and taking the first deep breath in. And then breathing out, emptying out the lungs completely. When you're ready, second breath in, all the way in. And then breathing out entirely. Breathing in one last time, oxygenating the mind, the brain. And then breathing out, relaxing the mind and body. Okay, gently open your eyes. And let's begin the podcast. Today we're talking about speak good words. Yeah, so it was a, it was a long week for me. I, I started my first week of school. So there were a little bit of moments of, uh, you know, just mostly just little anxious moments. And, um, you know, I'm not going to lie, that some moments took me out of my, uh, you know, out of my comfort zone or whatever. And, and I was like maybe a little bit more reactive than I wish I was. But I got through everything and... Uh, it was ended up being a good week, so I'm happy to be here and reconnect with you and and go into speaking good words. So, Byron, what is the definition or the the real like deeper philosophy behind uh, speaking good words? Yeah. So when my grandmaster, uh, Master Xing Yun, when he coined the, the term uh, three acts of goodness, he put speak good words in the middle as the second part because it was the level up from do good deeds. Do good deeds was supposed to be a bit easier to practice because doing good deeds is something that we do with our body. Whereas speaking good words becomes a bit harder because we're connecting with other people's minds on the level of speech. And it's something that we have to practice a lot with, knowing the vocabulary to use, the timing of the speech, and knowing what to say and how to say it at, at, the, at the right time. And everything that the three acts of goodness actually revolves around providing others with joy, convenience, confidence, and faith. And so we should be using our speech, according to the Grand Master, to provide people with yeah, the, th the four things. The, the joy, the convenience, the confidence, and the faith. And so speech is a tool. And if we cannot use the speech as a tool for positivity, then sometimes it's best to just remain silent. So here we have the duality of speech and silence, where we don't always have to use speech, but sometimes it's actually more wise and more beneficial to not say anything. And only when we have something good to say, when we can solve a problem, when we can provide someone with a solution or joy or comfort, only then do we exercise our right to speech. Only then do we use our tool of speech. I really like that. And it was making me kind of think of the power of the tongue, you know, yeah. like the real power of the tongue. And that's kind of like a lesson that we've had to learn even in this podcast, because um, like, or at least for myself, that's what made me think of is like, sometimes um, I just come in there, right? Just jump in or, or we start jumping in and things get a little bit more chaotic. But it's because uh, everyone's comfortable in a different kind of uh, conversation or situation and different energy levels as well. And so that's why I guess just remaining silent is kind of sometimes can always be like a really good thing, right? The thing is like there was research done to show that when we speak something out loud, it holds more 10 times more weight than if we were to just think it in the mind. And if we were to say something negative, it holds four to seven times more weight than if we were to say something positive. And so that just shows the power of negative speech. 
and if we were to just refrain from negative speech, we would have been able to up our game by 40 to 70 times what we could do without any speech at all. And if we were to incorporate positive speech into our practice, our daily lives, then we can really change, turn our lives around because with speech it's the story we tell ourselves, it's the story we tell other people. And if we can tell a positive story, we live a positive life. If we have negative speech all the time, we're creating a self-fulfilling prophecy where we are creating a negative story in our minds that then we have to live and then we create into reality. So this just shows the power of negative speech and speak good words first begins with silence to combat negative speech because if we don't know the right things to say we end up saying the wrong things and if we are doing that regularly habitually then it's better to just nip that in the bud by just practicing silence and then slowly we start to learn what are the right things to say and when should I say certain things and how should I structure the things that I want to say and then only when we start to realize how we can speak good words should we start incorporating speech into our practice but until then this is like baby steps this is where we start to practice how to talk from kindergarten level and in kindergarten level in from the perspective of a cultivator it's best to start with silence and then we build our vocabulary building good vocabulary and our vocabulary dictates our reality because the words that we use creates the environment that we live in and if we are around people who have a lot of negative speech a lot of like negative vocabulary or just speaking a lot about things that aren't positive in general then we're already setting ourselves up in a negative state to live our lives so I think choosing our environment choosing our friends choosing the vocabulary we use and the, the context of our speech really plays a very big part in the practice of speaking good words. Yes, and so that, that kind of made me think like, there's that's the deeper level to speak good words, right? So there's, there's speak good words, and then there's um, limit negative thoughts or limit negative words, right? Yeah. So, so you stop, uh, you start limiting the amount of negative things you say in a day, and then maybe, after that the next step up is being comfortable being silent right yeah. and that's like the next wisdom to it and then the third step above that is actually speaking good words right yeah. and if you if you combine all three together then you've kind of grasped this stage of the three acts of goodness yeah and Lee like if we talk about meditation which we do a lot meditation is about you know like monitoring the mind observing the mind and then when the mind thinks negative thoughts we learn to deal with it you know like we learn to go back to the silence of the mind whereas practicing meditation in speech is where we observe the negative speech and then going back to silence as the baseline so that we don't keep fueling the negative speech just like in meditation with the mind we don't keep fueling negative thoughts it's like speech meditation you stop saying bad things, stop ha saying harmful, negative things, and then go back to silence. And that's the baseline for speech meditation. And then we start to incorporate positive speech into the speech meditation to increase the level of our speech. And so that, that kind of goes into like positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement, right? Yeah. And so it's like... Like, can you think of an example, maybe in the classroom or something, where you've uh, you've tried to implement speaking good words rather than maybe being a little bit negative? Uh, yeah. y you know, like, can you, you think you could go into something like that, an example yeah. like that? I think because the fact that negative speech carries so much more weight and influence, it's so much more harmful to say bad things than it is to say good things, and it's actually more powerful. If you were to say something negative, it would affect the students a lot more than if you were to say something positive. And that's actually why the Grand Master labeled it as the three acts of goodness. What we should do, we should speak good words, do good things, think good thoughts. The Buddha actually worded it as the precepts. What you shouldn't do, don't tell lies, you know, don't do drugs, don't do sexual misconduct, you know, don't kill, don't steal. The precepts tell you what you shouldn't do. And that sort of 
creates a sense of restriction of freedom. And in this society now, we don't want our freedom to be taken away from us. And when the Grand Master trans, uh, reworded it, restructured it to the three acts of goodness, he's saying, you should do this, you should do this. And it's, in a sense, it's mm -hmm. like giving us freedom. It's not taking us, taking anything away from us. It's giving us the things that we should be doing. And so with speech, it's the same way. Like when I'm in a classroom with students and something bad happens, instead of telling someone, you shouldn't do this or don't do this, this is bad. I would be maybe pointing to someone else that's doing something right and say, you should do this instead. This is the right thing to do, you know, like encouraging them towards what they should do instead of telling them what they shouldn't do. Because when we tell someone what they shouldn't do, instinctively they want to do it because they don't want their freedom to be taken away from them and they want to prove to themselves that they still have the freedom to choose to exercise their right so what would be um a good starting point or um, maybe a way that you could start applying this uh principle yeah i think the first thing that we need to understand when we want to start speaking good words would be to increase mindfulness of our speech in general and knowing what type of words we are speaking on a regular basis, what our speech habits are, and its effect on other people, but also its effect on ourselves. When we say certain things, what type of mood does it create for us? What type of mental state does it lead us to? And then does it lead others towards a positive or a negative state? So just mindfulness of our speech would be a great starting point, which is very difficult. But then after that, just slowly tinkering the habits and then transforming the negative speech to a positive speech which might have to go through silence first as we said before so from what you said like that was a really good point and from what you said that kind of that makes me want to follow this principle more right like yeah. i don't want to create a real a negative reality and as much as i want to uh, bring other people up it starts with me, right? It really does. Uh, if I want to bring people around me up and, and make them feel better, um, I have to be more conscious or place my awareness on what I'm saying. And and even the thoughts in my head, and that's something we have to get into uh, further down the road. But, but yeah, so I think that's one of the real reasons why I think you would really want to follow this principle because you're you're going to change your own reality. Because whether you've realized it or not, you've already been changing your reality yeah. with the things you say and the things you say to people. And you're affecting their realities too. Yeah. So, so that's, that's an interesting point. And then so what would be, like a, what would be a tip you'd have for be, becoming more comfortable in the silence? For me, I always feel like I have to say something. And if, and, and if, I, if I hear someone hurting, for instance, which maybe is a more extreme example, then I definitely feel like I need to say something. Yeah. And sometimes I just speak without thinking before I speak. And yeah. sometimes that works, but, but intention is not always, um, is not the be all end all, right? You need to have some sort of skill to it, right? Mm. So um, how, would you, how would you go about becoming more comfortable in silence? All right, so like, I think that silence is so important because we don't always need to be doing something. And with silence, with the three acts of goodness, in terms of the three acts of goodness, there's three types of silence. There's physical silence, speech silence, and then mental silence. With physical silence, it's very easy because when we don't need our hands, we just put them on the, on the table, on our lap, on the ground, or wherever. We just rest them. Verbal silence, if we don't need to be saying something, then I think it's important to learn to just not say anything and be okay with the verbal silence. And then the hardest part actually is with the mental silence because it's impossible sometimes for us to just rest the mind. It's so uncomfortable for the mind to be silent that it's always going to be thinking things, going on like trains of thoughts. Whereas it would be so silly if when we don't need to use our hands, our hands are just moving on their own accord because they're just conditioned to move like that, you know? Like when we don't need the hands, the hands can rest. When we don't need to say anything, we can just rest the tongue, rest our voice. When we don't need to use our mind, we can just rest the mind. It'd be crazy if we were just saying something forever, like not knowing how to rest the tongue, which is what some people do. I think um, one of the main things that works for me, and I think everyone has their own ways of 
dealing with silence, enjoying silence. But for me, it's just returning to the breath. And I love that. When I don't need to be doing something, and to be honest, sometimes I don't need to be doing anything. Maybe I've just finished class, I'm resting, I'm just relaxing in my office, and I just want to have a few minutes to just catch my breath, just to have a rest. And I will just sit still on my table, on my chair, and just take a few deep breaths. And then just, it's like meditation, but not really, because it's not like you're sitting cross-legged, it's not like your eyes are closed, you're just resting, you're just in a restful state, and you're just breathing consciously, mindful of your breath, enjoying your breath, and what you're doing at that point is just conscious breathing. And I think that really helps alleviate the need to be doing something, because I think we are so fast, like this is such a fast-paced society where if we are not doing something, we feel physically uncomfortable. If we are not saying something, doing something, or thinking something, we feel like we don't exist. We feel like nothing's happening, we're not making progress. Mm, and yes. to learn to be comfortable in silence, comfortable in a restful state, is something that we're lacking, I think, in this day and age. Because we're not used to that stillness at this point. We're always on our phones, we're always listening to music, we're always talking to someone, we're always thinking something. We've lost the ability to just rest. And I think that rest really gives us so much energy when we need it most. So I think that that's a really good point, right? If you can just take a second to take a breath, just one breath, yeah. one deep breath, yeah. then you can slow yourself down. Yeah. And then you can stop yourself from reacting. Yeah. And then you can act and be yeah. precise with your words. Yeah. And when you are being precise with your words, then you can choose to speak good words. Yes. That's spot on, dude. Because with, with stillness and then speaking from a place of stillness, we are much more mindful of what we say, much more mindful of how we say it, when we say it, what needs to be said, and its influence on other people. You know, I don't. I don't believe that I'm. I'm there. I'm not. Ma I haven't. I haven't mastered speaking good words. Um, Lee, like, I think if from I can just from cut this. You Lee, if I can just like cut you on that. I think you're the master of speaking good words. I haven't <laughs> heard you say anything negative since I've met you, and everything you say is always so encouraging, full of praise, and full of insight and wisdom. I think you're the grand master of speaking good words. <laughs> Ah, thank you. Um, but no, so, <laughs> and I don't mean, and I'm not putting myself down, but what I'm saying is, like, what are the, the stages of mastery? We define the stages of mastery as effortless, unconditional, and eternal. Yeah. So, yes, when I'm on my A game. Yes, when I'm being conscious and aware of the words I'm saying and the effect they have on others and the effect they have on me and my reality. And yes, when I'm taking those moments to pause and listen. But no, when I'm not doing that, which happens, it happens. Yeah. And that's why it's like, for me, I feel like you have to have a goal or something you're aspiring towards, right? So yeah. it's, it, is it with the good, do good deeds? It was maybe for me, I was saying maybe start with doing one good deed today or, yeah. you know, one good deed this week or five or seven, whatever you want to do, right? Yeah. And, and for speak good words, Am I speaking good words in every interaction I have? Am I speaking good words when there's no one around me? Am I speaking good words when I'm in a high pressure situation and I have to speak good words and I have to really listen? Am I pausing? Am I being silent when I have to be silent or should be silent? Am I really listening? I don't do all those things all the time. Yeah. And so we, I want to get to the point where this is effortless, unconditional, and eternal. Yeah. So I'm, I'm speaking good words effortlessly. I don't have to be on my A game. There is no A game. That's just my game. Yeah. My game is speaking good words. My yeah. game is doing good deeds. And we're going to get to that in the next episode, and that's thinking good thoughts because they all come together and make a package, the yeah. three acts of goodness, yeah. right? Nice. Tag. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one thing we could leave the audience with is try today to be more mindful of, um, of the words you're using, the, the, the words you're choosing. Try to uh, increase your vocabulary. Be conscious of the words that are being spoken around you. Fill your reality with more good words. Yeah. 
yeah. and you don't have to say every good word. So yeah. ideally, your your environment is surrounded by by good or better words. So that can be through um, the content that you consume, yeah. right? The things that you're consuming because positivity spreads just like negativity spreads. Yeah. And everything we're doing here is trying to spread that positivity. And, and, and I think you've really created that chain reaction for me. I think what you say was so important when you say like be around good words, be, uh, consume good content because the, the vocabulary that we end up using is the vocabulary that we consume from social media, from our friend circle, from our social circle. And so being around people that naturally speak good words, consuming content that is positive, because there's so much more negative content than there is positive content out there. And the content we consume provides us with the vocabulary that we use on a daily basis. And so watch inspirational stuff, watch wholesome stuff, watch interesting stuff. I think it's important for us to talk about what constitutes as good speech and some examples of that and for me words of encouragement are so important mm. words of advice when someone needs help but when they don't need help we can always give them encouragement some supporting words and then just like uplifting words like good job hey how's it going you know like the like the things that we say when we say it with a smile on our face positive energy the right intention even if we don't say a lot, we will still communicate so much more with the few words we say if we were to say it with the right energy. That's a perfect thing that you just said there. And I think that what you said totally builds on everything we've been, we've been, um, we've been working on over the last 11 weeks. And, yeah. and it also will lead to the next stage, which will be part three of this, thinking good thoughts. Because all of them together create a good energy. Yeah. And... In silence, there's still the good energy. In action, there's good energy and yeah. good intention. And that's what the human picks up. That's what the person you're communicating to picks up on. Just to sum up the episode on speak good words, my grandmaster mentioned that the first part of speak good words is to limit negative speech. The second part is to practice silence when there's nothing to say. And then the third part is to slowly incorporate positive speech when we know the right thing to say and then the right timing to say it. And to practice speaking good words, it's important to first be mindful of what we are saying in the first place, of our habits and the influence of the words we say on other people and ourselves. And then it's also important to practice being comfortable in silence because we don't always need to be saying something and we shouldn't feel the impulse to say something all the time and so it's important to be comfortable in silence and finally it's important to develop a vocabulary of positive speech by consuming good content by being around good people and by creating a positive environment for us to live in so that we can consume more positive vocabulary and this is so important because the words we speak create the reality that we live in thanks for another amazing week Byron and uh, I hope you made it to the end all the listeners out there Next week, we're going to touch on uh, Think Good Thoughts, the final chapter in the three acts of goodness. And we're going to summarize it all together. And uh, I think it's going to be really nice for next week. So I hope you check it out. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. Peace.